double doors open and it hit you. The music, loud, pumping. You could feel the, the warm air coming in for, because it was packed, rammed with people dancing. You'd have this feeling of we're all in the same club together, we're all enjoying this music. It was like a little family, it became addictive. Smelling the brute and the coffee. Down that horrible little sleepy that this toilet room where you left your bag and down those stairs. People shuffling along, dancing in the atmosphere and everything. It was fantastic. And the place was heaving. The floor was actually moving. And there, there were these people just dancing in the, in the most amazing fashion I've ever seen in my entire life. I, I was just mesmerised. I always remember music being in my, in my house. Um, I remember my mum used to sing opera while she was doing the ironing, which I thought was funny. And my older sisters always used to listen to Aretha Franklin, Joe Tex. So there was really no other music for me to kind of follow. It was just there all the time. I used to go to a place called NEMS Record in Southport, uh, and they used to have a list of what the issues were that week. And I used to look through it. The girl was called Penny Story. I didn't ever went out with her, but she used to save records for me. Phil, do you like this? So I bought lots of stuff in the shops when they were all three and four ones. Um, and I, re I realised that they're all on similar labels. They're all on Tan and Motown, Stax, Atlantic or Stateside, the ones I liked. My friend Liz, her grandmother lived in Grimsby. <laughs> she was down there one summer and we were 17. We were both working in the lovable bra factory. And um, Liz had said, there's this music they're all playing, they do these really good steps and it's called Northern Soul, show you how you do the steps and everything. I actually met a guy and he said, there's an all night disco. He said, you have to go on the train. He said, tell your mum you're stopping at your friend's house and come out to this all night disco. So having a bit of a sense of adventure, because um, I was always a little bit of a, the daredevil one, I thought, yes, this sounds like me, something different. We were mods, we started wearing the clothes you know, we were saving up our money so that by the end of the month we could go and buy that pair of uh, royal shoes from the Ivy shop in Richmond. That was very much part of it. Half of it was the fashion, the style, wanting to belong to that, that kind of club. And the other half was the music, which fitted the style of... We wanted to look American. We wanted to hear American music. Because I'd always like to dance, but I always used to get frustrated dancing around the handbag and shuffling in the heels was this. No one had high heels on, they all had flat shoes on. And I just thought, this is me. Absolutely, it's like the heavens had opened and someone said, okay, this, this is what you're gonna be doing. <laughs> For me, it was about dancing, because I was always ready to move to the music. I wasn't one of the wallflowers that sat at the table. I'd just get up and do my thing. And we were dancing all night. We were drinking all night. We heard music we'd never heard, every track on the four beat, all these people we met, they were so friendly. Because in London, it was a bit more of a macho type thing, you know, and you kind of, uh, you know, you had to stay with your little group of blokes because you might get ganged up on. The people in the North, not like that, very friendly, welcomed you for, with arms open and, oh, you come up from London, yeah, whereabouts are you from? And I, why, why you come all this way? And, you know, that very first night, I made mates that I still know to this day. My favourite record is called Little Togetherness by the Young Hearts on Canterbury. That record, it starts with a piano and a bass and then the drums kick in. It's such a great record. Got to, you got to kind of say it is the essence of a Northern Soul record. I became different because I wasn't looking for a boyfriend all the time, and you know, my, it was more like going down to dance, and the guys were our friends, and um, it did become like that. Even at Wigan, like you know, people were your friend and when you went to a normal club you didn't realise you were talking to a guy and they were thinking something else and we were thinking oh yeah how are you doing you know and yeah so it became I became a different person actually. 
And the, the good thing about it was, if, if you bumped into someone, they'd say, oh, how are you? Where are you from? Rather than fight with you like they do anywhere else. I don't think I ever saw anybody, ever hit anybody there. Because it was, oh, where are you from? Oh, what records do you like? Uh, Invitations, what's wrong with your baby? Just that, that opening brass stuff just reminded me so much of the wheel. It was just unbelievable. I can smell the coffee and the brute, as I said, when I hear, hear that record. And it's just amazing. The beat, you've got the beat there. And if there's a beat, you can move to it. And when you're young, you know, be foolish and be happy, as the song says. So you want to get out, you know, you didn't really want to dance slow with the girl. You wanted to be out on the floor with your mates and all looking good and cool and impressing the girls so that maybe, you know, you might have a chance with them later on. <laughs> Walking down the street, um, there were the normal people and then you were Northern Soli because it wasn't um, the popular thing at the time to be. So it was a, the complete antithesis um, of the current trend of the time, and which I actually quite liked because I've never been one to run with the mob and I prefer to be individual. And this is a group of people that, you know, you didn't give a hoot, you do what you do. You enjoy your music, you dance how you want to dance and it's accepted. It's called The Champion by Willie Mitchell and it brings back a huge memory of the first time I did hear it on the dance floor and the energy it created um, for the dancers, especially those at the front of, in those days at Wigan who just took my breath away. I watch now the footage of, of the casino and I recognise the people in that clip and uh, it just brings me back to when I was on that dance floor in, in those days gone by. It was the only place that was open from 11 o'clock at night till 8, 8 o'clock in the morning. And I remember coming out of those doors onto that back car park, it was freezing cold February, and having to wait till 9 o'clock till the first, the first train back to Southport. Oh, horrible. The beat of that music that really came from the Motown, it was kind of carrying on from that. That was a constant. Richard Searling would see me, because I was always down near the front, and he would say, this is for you, Scotty, and it would be the young man. Going to be a big thing. And I think why I like it, it's sort of a note perfect. Some of it's a bit slightly out of tune, and I like that the singing is at a different rate, a different time than the music, and it's lazy sounding, and I think it's maybe a wee bit like me. I sound a wee bit lazy and laid back, and that's what that's like. Because I left in 1981, I left to go travelling, and I travelled round the world for about five years. I had uh, two cassette tapes with me. Um, when I came to Australia to live, I still had, I had one cassette tape then, and that eventually broke. So I had about 20 years where I had no Northern Soul, and I thought, well, that's it. I came to a stage, maybe it's a midlife crisis thing, I came to a stage where I thought, well, what do I really like in my life? And I think, let's get back to the roots here. Um, families, my son's growing up. I thought, really, I have to think on, for me, and what I like and what I want. And um, Northern Soul was one of the things. You live your life, you go on, you move, you, you, you do things with your life. And, you know, music is playing always in the background. Oh, yeah. mm. My favorite song is Run For Cover by The Dells. It has a huge impact when you hear it again after you haven't heard it for 20 years. <laughs> it just takes me back. I can close my eyes and I can be on, on the dance floor in the Highland Room and I can feel the people around me and I can just imagine it as it was. I can put myself right back on the torch days and see all the people around me and yeah, that's why we like it. We want to go back there. We want to feel those emotions that we had. I, you know, it was just a big part of my life. It has such an effect on people when they first hear it, whether that's 30 years ago or whether that's five years ago, it sticks and you come back to it. And that just shows you why it survived. It's, it's still underground, you know. Um, it was our scene. We 
developed all the dancing and everything, they had their own fashion. Over the years, some people will say, oh, well, yeah, things are different now, this and that. No, I don't need somebody to tell me the way it's supposed to be. I know the way it's supposed to be. It's come and gone, but it's still music forever. It's probably the only constant in my life. Music has always been in my life, and it will always be in my life.